this is Greg from 4SRC. Today we're here with Gary who's going to walk us through the Spectrum DX6R radio. So we've got two versions. We've got my version which is a little bit closer to a stock version and then Gary's version which he already put a lot of the uh, really enhancements and different things that you can do with the radio. So uh, Gary, why don't you walk us through the radio? Well first of all one of the cool things about this radio and, and this is you all know about this by now is the fact that it runs on an Android operating system and by that you've got a whole lot of customization that you can do to this radio. Um, one of the biggest things first of all that you want to do when you take it out of the box and unbox it connect it to your Wi-Fi. So one of the biggest recommendations I can make when you first get your radio connect it to Wi-Fi and go to the Google Play Store log in with the Gmail address. If you don't have one, sign up for one. It's easy enough to do. And you want to make sure that your version of Raceware is the most up-to-date. So here's the version that I have right there. Since it doesn't have an update button there, it just says open, I have the most up-to-date version of it. Uh, conversely, let me just go to, uh, I believe I saw the Chrome browser, or Google itself, has an update that's for the search. Here you can see it actually says update. That's your indication to let you know whether or not you need to update the app. The updates are completely free and they do add functionality to your radio. As we come out with new uh, tuning, uh, you know, if there's uh, more stable builds, um, features, just things to make your radio work better, it'll be released free of charge for you on the Google Play Store. Whenever you connect to Wi-Fi, it should ping Google servers and let you know if you do have an update available. Now one thing you may want to do too is go in the settings on here and go to um, where you can limit when it updates. Auto update apps, you can have it uh, auto update anytime. You can have it never auto update or update only if Wi-Fi is connected. I have mine auto updating only if Wi-Fi uh, is connected. Uh, again, that basically limits to, uh, if I'm using too much cellular data, things along those lines, that I'm not downloading stuff and you know, dragging down huge amounts of data. First of all, on a slower connection than my home Wi-Fi, and second of all, using the uh, tethered connection on my cell phone. Uh, and that's the other thing, too, is a lot of folks now, um, when you're at the track, if there is no Wi-Fi, Depending on the data plan that you have, a Wi-Fi hotspot many times is included at no additional charge. It's something you can use uh, when you're at the track, but quite honestly, if you have a decent smartphone, like I've got my phone here, this is my radio, I can use this as my media consumption device and use that as my radio. It'll make sure too that my battery lasts longer on my transmitter too. So as you can see, going to Wi-Fi, super simple and it really helps make sure that you're always getting the most out of your DX6R Pro. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, another thing I like to do that uh, this is really a personal preference thing, I'm not a big fan of swiping on keyboards on screen. I like the tactile feature of an actual keyboard. And again, because it is an Android based system, you can utilize a Bluetooth keyboard. Like I've got my Bluetooth keyboard here that I use with my tablet and my smartphone and we'll turn my radio around if I hit the space bar, it should pop up the display just like that. So when you're setting up a model, this makes life a whole lot easier, um, especially as you've got version 203, so on and so forth. Um, it just, it's such a time saver when you're setting something new up. Even when you're first setting your radio up and you're just typing your name in on the setup screen, it just saves you that little bit of time. And you know, this is a very cramped, space, even for this large of a display, for people like me with fat fingers, it definitely makes life easier. So one of the things I'm going to show you here is how to speed up how the radio actually scrolls through the animations. And this is really a trick for any Android platform. So what you're going to do is swipe down from the top of the screen until you have your gear here that will take you into the settings. Now what I want you at this point to do is go all the way to the bottom to about tablet. Yes, it's a radio, not a tablet, but bear with me here. And in about tablet, what you want to do is go down to the build number here and tap it several times. Now this radio has already had it done, and what you want to do is, is go through this until this said you have unlocked um, developer mode. And once you've unlocked developer mode, what that allows you to do 
is if I go back to the previous screen, I can go into developer options. And there are three settings I'm going to change in here. And we're going to scroll up to the animation scale. So out of the box, the factory default on the window uh, automation, the transition, uh, I'm sorry, not automation, animation, the transition animation, and the, um, the duration scale, these are all set to one out of the box. If you see here, this is set to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and I'm gonna set this one here from one to 0.52. That'll speed up your transition when you go from one screen to the other. Basically what it's doing is it's forcing the operating system to draw everything faster on screen. Just a minor tweak, doesn't actually change uh, the performance, you're not like overclocking it or speeding it up at all, you're just changing how fast things will animate on here. Um, another thing that I do, and this is a battery savings uh, thing, I normally have my display set fairly dim. The biggest thing that's going to take up your battery on your radio is your display. Um, so if you turn the brightness down, you'll extend your life on there. If you're not connected to a Bluetooth or to Wi-Fi, turn those off because the radio will continue to look for those devices until it finds it. Finally, if I go into the display, and what I want to do is I want to change the screen timeout. And that's under sleep. And right now it is set for a five minute delay on my radio. I set it to a one minute delay. Again, it's all about battery and power savings as you're going through and using it. One of the additional nice things about the DX6R Pro is the fact that, much like my smartphone that I use here, is it uses an Android-based operating system. And as such, there are tweaks and um, little applications and tips that I've picked up over the years that really I've tailored the operating system to my personal preference. As you can see, one of the first things here is my wallpaper is different. That you can change yourself at any point in time. This is actually uh, from the last baseball game I went to from inside the stadium. But I use a launcher, and that's your interface that you have for the Android skin on, on the DX6R Pro. Um, I use a launcher called Nova Launcher, and we can provide a link in the description to that on the Google Play Store. And the nice thing about Nova Launcher is the fact that it is a gesture-based operating system. For example, if I want to get into my app drawer, normally I'd have to hit the app drawer button or the home button on screen. So if I swipe up on the screen, it takes me to my app drawer and all of my applications that I have on here. Another thing it allows me to do is within the app drawer, I can either have it scroll side to side or up and down. And as you see here too, I also have my apps folded. So for productivity, these are my productivity apps that I have in here, such as the Google Play Store, uh, Astro File Manager, which is just a way that I can check and see what's on uh, my device as well. Um, my Nova settings are all in here, the clock, that's all in here. And that is not something you can do with the stock build of Android that's on here. Now the good news is you don't need root access to do any of this. Um, in addition, to those settings there, it also has a feature where I can set like the gesture for the app drawer where I can also set it to launch the raceware right out of the box with just a gesture. All I do on my radio is if I double tap the screen, it launches into raceware. Now, the standard version of Nova Launcher has almost all of these features. However, you do have to use the Nova Launcher Prime to unlock the uh, gestures and such. That is a paid app or a paid service that you have on there. Um, finally, another tweak in your settings for your models, it's kind of hard to see now, but you can actually sideload or upload a picture of your car or truck from like if you have your own paint scheme you can have that representative on your model so like this is my model for my 22 SCT 2.0 I've got a picture from the Spectrum race from a few years ago um, I have my 22.4 with my paint scheme on it here I haven't gotten my two-wheel drive buggy back from the painter yet so eventually I'll have a picture up here on my 22 3.0 um, I mean 
it's a very easy and intuitive radio to use. That's the nice thing with having this graphic user interface is if you have any questions, it's right there on the screen for you. But there are nice little tweaks uh, and, and hits and tips, especially for those coming from different smartphones or tablets. Say you're an iPhone user, you're an iPad user. This is a different sort of user interface uh, than what you might be used to. Uh, another thing too, if you do plan on using the DX6R Pro as a browsing type device, so say you want to be able to watch YouTube or to access uh, the internet using the Chrome browser on there, they do have a data saver feature which I would highly recommend using. Um, basically on that what it does is it, um, it reduces amount, the amount of data that you need to uh, load a web page and it will just reduce, especially if you're tethering to your smartphone, very few people have unlimited data, uh, that would let you um, still be able to do casual browsing and you don't have to use as much. Uh, basically if you hit the settings, there's data saver right there and on YouTube it's in almost the exact same position. When you're driving your car or truck, there's a number of different features that are really easy to use if you know where to look for them. And it's not hard to find them either. So from your home screen here uh, in the raceware, one of the things I find useful, especially in practice, LiPo batteries last forever now, um, even if you're using lower capacity batteries. The ultra shorties from Team Orion are only 3200 milliamps, but with the 17.5 motor, I can easily get 15, 20 minutes out of it, which can get excess heat into my motor. Not necessarily a good thing. So what I can do is I can set an up or a down timer uh, in the radio itself. And to change the settings, I just go to the uh, third screen here and go to timers. So for our local track that we have, uh, they generally will run five or six minute qualifiers, seven minute mains. So if the times change, all I have to do is tap that button and then I can hit you know five six seven whatever the time would be so let's say I'm getting ready for a main it's a seven minute main hit seven hit the check mark and now saves that and one of the nice things is if you push and hold in the scroll select wheel it'll take you back to the home screen now from here you can assign uh, the start menu basically you just hit you know start and it'll start counting down there is a way you can go in through the software and have it set, uh, start and stop by your button on the bottom here as well. With the DX6R Pro, with the way the graphic user interface is set up, it's really easy to do things like set your sub trims when you're first setting up a model. If you can see here, the wheels are a little bit off to the right hand side. So I've got to trim this car out to the left. And what I like doing with all of my radios is I will do the big swing at the sub trim in the steering menu here and then fine tune the trim once I'm on track with my grip dial buttons. So going into steering and I'm going to scroll down here until I get to uh, sub trim and then let's see there's two ways that I can adjust it. I can either hit the plus or minus or I can grab the the dot here with my finger and move it side to side so there you can see how uh, to one side, I've got it plus 110, it came back to my left, I can go back to the other way and it takes it back to the right. So that 110 looked pretty close and I can fine tune it uh, from there. And here you can see the number slowly going up. That's a good ballpark and I would feel comfortable with this, throwing it on the track and then fine tuning it with my grip dial buttons. Another thing of importance here is your trim step. This basically tells the radio how many steps every time you hit the grip dial button or, or the plus or minus button in here, how many points you want it to move. I like really having a fine tuned radio, so I back that down to one. Some people like taking bigger swings at it. They don't notice if, it, if it's that far off, so you can set it to three or four. If you're used to using radios like the DX4R Pro, the DX4C, the DX4S, the default on that is four out of the box. So this one takes a little bit bigger swing at it, but that's something you can easily fine tune 
uh, as you use it. Same thing goes for the throttle um, because we do have a motor hooked up and everything. I don't want this car taking off on the bench right now. Um, we do have everything set to neutral on here, which is a good thing. Um, you, one thing you do want to make sure as well with your speed controller, you always want to ensure that you're getting full throttle uh, when you are setting up a new model. Make sure that you're going through the setup process on the speed controller to ensure you're getting both full throttle and full brake. Some people like to set their throws, and we're going to go back here to the throttle screen real quick. Some people will set their throws to um, maximum out of the box. Uh, other people will go ahead and uh, change it where it's just 100. I will normally set mine to 100 and then adjust forward or back from there just to make sure that if it's not quite getting full throw that it will eventually do that. Another valuable tuning aid that I absolutely love on the DX6R Pro is the ABS or the anti-lock braking setup on here. Uh, with ABS what it does for you is instead of giving you an abrupt 100% brake it actually pulses the brake as the car is moving. Um, in low traction situations, two-wheel drive vehicles, it's a huge advantage. Um, I know on two-wheel drive buggy, it's one of the things that I love tuning the most. What it allows me to do is get into a corner harder, hit the brakes, and not have to worry about the rear end swapping ends on me because these have stopped rotating and basically removed all traction. It's, it's a more controllable slide than just an abruptness to it. And to enable the ABS, you just go down to the ABS feature on the uh, throttle screen. Just go from disabled to enable. And you can't hurt anything by playing with your settings here. Experiment. See what works well for you. Now, this is Greg's radio here. Um, so thanks, Gary, for walking us through the different settings and different things that we can do with the DX6R. Um, you know, anything that we talked about, some of the apps, we'll put the links below in the description. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those below. Uh, Gary, anything else you want to say about the model? The, the main thing I will tell you about the DX6R Pro is it's just fun to play with. There are so many different options in here. You're not going to break anything. You're really not. Um, so don't be afraid to experiment. Throw on different wallpapers. Look for new cool apps in the Google Play Store. There's a lot of stuff out there that's free that you can really enhance the performance of the radio. Um, and that's not even talking about things like Tekken has their hot wire program. High Tech has got their charging monitor app as well that really takes the performance of your DX6R Pro. And we always talk about radios as an investment because you may have one or two cars or seven or eight cars, but you have one radio that controls them all. And this, if anything, makes it more of an investment for you that you can utilize across multiple platforms more easily and enjoy it more. Definitely. All right, well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.